Slavs have their origin in the corded wear culture, or to be more precise, on the periphery of the corded wear and bell beaker cultures. There are many theories on the exact place where Bautoslavs originate from, but I suppose it is Poland. Early Slavs can be modeled as roughly 32% bell beaker and 68% corded wear. In the early Iron Age, Slavs deviated from the Balts and the Pomeranian culture formed. Early Slavs had contact with Iranians in the east, and that's why words such as Boh and Sabaka and myriad of other Iranic loanwords entered the Slavic lexicon. Modern North Slavs are strikingly different from modern Balts, even though the two de deviated from the same source population, for two reasons. The Slavs mix with the Scythians, while the Balts mix with textile ceramics derived populations. We need not forget about the Eastern Balts, the Moschino and Tushino cultures of Eastern Europe. They were a big part of the genesis of Eastern Slavs, but not of the Western and Southern Slavs. The Finno-Ugric Diakovo culture was likely Indo-European in its genetics too, but that is a topic for another video. For all that matters, in this video I will refer to Diakovo as Uralians. Preg Karchak is undoubtedly the origin of the Slavs. So we can determine the Slavs started spreading in antiquity from the Kiev branch of Preg Karchak culture. The Turkic and, and other people's migrations through the steppes pushed Eastern Slavs of the Kiev to head north. Thus the Slovenes of Ilmen, the Krivici, the Dragovici and the Radimici ended up where they did. Vjatici had a more interesting origin story. According to Slavic chronicles, Vjatici derived from a Western Slavic group. There was a Norse presence by Ladoga since early medieval period. In the 9th century, Eastern Slavic tribes invited a Norse Viking named Rurik to rule over them. In 11th century, following the death of Yaroslav the Wise of Rurik dynasty, three brothers Yaropolk, Vladimir and Oleg started ruling in three different branches of Kievan Rus. Kievan Rus started to fall apart into pieces. Vladimir the Great converted the inhabitants of Kievan Rus into Christianity, but some tribes were reluctant to go Christian. For example, Vyatichi tribe continued the pagan tradition of burning the dead until 12th century. Not all of the tribes in Kievan Rus were Slavic. Some tribes were Finnic, such as the Meria tribe. Although the Merians did not really intermarry with the Slavs and were most likely pushed out east and north by the invading Slavs, it would be silly to deny the presence of minor Merian genome in the modern Russian ethnos. Ruthenian branch of Kievan rulers would intermarry with Lithuanian nobles, which set the stage for Lithuanian annexation of Ruthenia. In the 13th century, the Tatars sacked Vladimir, Kolomna, Moscow, Kiev. Only Russian cities to escape the wrath of the Tatar horde were Pskov and Novgorod. In 1237, Batu Khan conquered Kievan Rus and imposed the Tatar yoke onto Russian people. Kievan chronicles state, For our sins, unknown nations arrived. No one knew their origin or whence they came from, or what religion they practiced. Mongols first attacked Rizan, then Kolomna, then Moscow. And finally Vladimir. They burned the cities down, raped and pillaged the women and children. The town of Kazelsk in modern Kaluga region of Russia resisted the Mongols for seven weeks. Novgorod, Smolensk, Galich and Pskov willingly submitted to the Mongol rule. Moscow started to flourish under the Mongol rule. The Rurikids continued to rule Muscovy, even though they got their powers indirectly from the Golden Horde. Muscovites defeated the Mongols at the Battle of Kulikovo Field in 1389 by Dmitry Donskoy, or otherwise known as Dmitry of Don. Basically, here lied the birth of the modern Russian ethnicity and the modern Uf Ukrainian slash Belarusian ethnicity. Those that beat the Tatars and started to live independently were the Russians. So those that continued living under Polish and Lithuanian heel were the Ukrainians and Belarusians. The influence is clear in the language. Pure Belarusian and Ukrainian languages are much closer to Polish than they are to Russian. The cultural influence of the Polacks was immense. Surprisingly, in Russian there really aren't many Turkic or Uralic loanwords. Our language has more European, Latin or Germanic loanwords than any other Slavic language though. This comes from us being governed by German dynasties in the early industrial period prior to the Bolshevik Revolution. The ethnogenesis of Russian folk can roughly be summed up in these pictures.